Of all the things of the wagon that, that we have taken into account so far, and we're a long way from being full, the harness is, is probably one of the most controversial things that we have in that there's a lot of people that doesn't like to judge it. Most of the time, when, I, when I'm judging, and a lot of people are judging, Dale has set up here a, a four up, which is, a, you know, there'd be at least a four, maybe a six up to pull a wagon that's, that's carrying all this weight. But in competition nowadays, we've gotten to the point where we have a harness for a team, which is two horses. And it is jammed on the wagon tongue. And I'm going to tell you, if I come up and I'm judging your wagon and all of your harness is jammed up together, I'm not going to take time to scatter that stuff out and look at it. Because if I've got 10, 15, or 20 wagons, I cannot take 10 or 15 minutes straightening out harness. So the first tip is going to be get that harness out where we can see it. That's the first thing. The next thing is when you are putting your harness together and you've, you've located it and you've got it uh, in hand, several things that you really need to check on. There's a lot of parts to this harness. Some of them are extremely important. Some of them are very small but extremely vital. So you've got to check on that. So we're going to start right here at the first. And these are the hames. The hames is what or what goes around the collar. The collar is what pulls the wagon with the horses, mules pushing against the collar. So if you look at the collar, you want the face of it, this is the face, to be smooth because this is what's going against the shoulder of the animal. It needs to be solid. And what I mean by solid, no breaks in it. Particularly a lot of, a lot of collars, you'll see them broken right here at the very bottom. And so you're going to have to take that in consideration. Two of the main pieces of, of, of leather that's on the harness are the hem straps. The top hem strap and the bottom hem strap. If these are the least bit this, uh, I want to say disenfranchised, but if they're not any good, what's going to happen is that's going to break and there goes your harness, and you've got a big problem. So check and make sure that these are good. Uh, most people, when they exhibit that the harness, uh, they've got the collars hanging on the, the hames, and, and there's not anything wrong with that. It would be better if they were attached like we see right here. Condition of the leather uh, is extremely important. When we look at our, our bridle, uh, most of them, uh, this is a mule bonnet. Uh, the, uh, the eyepiece, the main thing about, in my opinion, where the lines hook to the bit, I think it's important that they buckle instead of snaps, because buckle is, is, is what they used in, in the period. The next thing, and this is a good time to check the elasticity of the leather. These are the lines. If you've got lines that are weak, uh, you could be in for a major wreck. So check and make sure that these are in good shape. They're all good, not too oily, but that when you, when you crink them like that right there, that we do not see any cracks or uh, anything that looks like it's, it's going, going to break. Uh, on the bridle, these line carriers right here, they, they are important. They are important. The way they are attached is important. So you want, you want to look at that really well. Uh, the lead team harness is a little bit different than the wheel team harness, but we've got, uh, we've got back bands. We've got belly bands. Certainly all the leather needs to be in, 
in good condition. As far as the rest of this harness right here, uh, our tug, tug carriers, uh, we want to check and look at that. A lot, of, a lot of harness, some does and some don't, have what's called a crumper. This goes under the, the, the tail of, of the animal. And uh, it aids a little bit in stopping, not much, but it uh, keeps the harness from running up. We have on our lines, we have our, our check lines. These are to the outside. These are to the inside. Get it right here. And so you've, you've got a right and a left, G and haul. Main thing is the way I see it is your, these hame straps need to be really, really good. Some harness may have some spreaders on them. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but these are, these are spreaders and lines can be hooked through that. And the purpose of those was so that the animals could spread out and work better, pull harder. Okay, a couple of things that, uh, that I forgot to mention uh, a while ago, one being uh, the hames. These are the hames. And period uh, that we're talking about, they were wooden hames. They were not metal hames with the brass balls on them. I'm sure that there were some of those, but we don't have any, the documentation that we have, everything we see is wooden hames. The next thing, and I forgot to mention this, and I apologize for that. If you're going to judge harness, which you are going to judge harness if somebody hires you to, to judge their contest, you need to learn the parts of the harness. You need to know what you're talking about and what you are looking at. You need to know the function of each piece of that harness because if you don't know that, then you're handicapped. You just can't walk up there, see that stuff gathered up on that tongue and say, well, that looks about like a so-and-so and go on. You're hired to judge. So judge it. The difference between the wheel team and the lead team in the harness uh, is not very much difference at all. The main difference being in the britching. Now the britching goes around. We've got, we've got the crumper that we talked about under the tail. Okay, this is the britching. The britching goes beneath or above the, 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 the knees on the hind, uh, hind legs of, the, of, the, of the, the wheel team, kind of right below their, their butt there. And the purpose for these is to stop the wagon. If they're going down a steep hill, you're going to see experienced animals, they're going to hunker down and they're going to grab that uh, that britching because that britching is going to run right up against them, right up against uh, the rear legs there. And uh, that's what's going to hold that wagon back off of uh, the, the wheel team and then on down the line to the front team or the lead team. Uh, notice the difference. That harness up there, the, 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 we had tug chains or trace chains. Here we have leather tugs. And if you're looking at this, one of the things that you need to be looking at is how, if there's any wear in here where it goes back uh, on, the, uh, on the chains, uh, make sure that it's riveted or sewn really well back and front, back and front. So really that's about the only difference between the, the, uh, the harness on the lead team and, and the wheel team. 
Uh, if you really want to get down to fine tune of it, probably the wheel team harness is going to be a little bigger because the wheel team had bigger animals on it. Uh, but they are the ones that uh, pull and stop the most. Right here, uh, we have a period saddle. And uh, generally, uh, the cook did one or two things. He would ride this saddle as it was on the left-hand horse or the off horse uh, of, the, of the wheel team. Purpose of that being that uh, he wouldn't ride on the seat. They'd take the seat off. That way they could put more stuff in the wagon. And he would ride, he would ride here. From this position here, he can drive all four, all four horses. So we see, we see that, uh, that's been documented. Uh, a lot of times these wagons did not have seat. Cook would ride, would ride this, uh, the, the wheel team. Uh, documented fact, we know about that. Uh, you see here a, a pack saddle, it's just, it's just put here. Uh, normally this would go in, in the wagon. But I'll let, I'll let Dale talk about more about that than, than anything. Um, okay, what we have right here is this is called a neck yoke. And the purpose of the neck yoke is to hold the tongue up. Naturally, it's hooked to the wagon. And this is... is this is the main, that along with the britching is what's going to stop this, stop this wagon. Now, this thing is put on uh, in such a way that if you look at your harness, you have a neck yoke clip here. This is, go, this is part of knowing, uh, knowing your harness again. This hooks into the ring on the neck yoke, okay? This strap snap here has a pole strap going underneath this. This flows back, and I don't know whether you can get this on camera or not, goes back to what is called quarter straps. Here's your pole strap, and here's a quarter strap. These are hooked to the britching. All of the stopping mechanism. There again, these need to be checked for stability to see how good they are, the pliability of the leather. One of these breaks, we could have a problem. Depending upon the severity, how, if we're going downhill, uh, uh, how gentle the team is, and on and on. But the wheel team, and if you just have a, a team harness, you need to have quarter straps, pole straps, and a neck yoke snap. Now, that is if you have a uh, drop tongue wagon. If you have a stiff tongue wagon, you got a totally different rig in the front end. In that, uh, in a stiff tongue wagon, you have chains that will run from the end of the wagon, I mean, from the way end of the tongue down to this mechanism right here. Uh, so if you depend on what kind of tongue you got, drop tongue or stiff tongue, it's going to depend whether you have a neck yoke or not. One other thing that we need to address is the age of the harness. And uh, it's always a point of contention. It seems like a uh, new, brand new harness that you can order today, or whether you take some of this old harness like Dale has that he's reconditioned, uh, it's put back original hardware. Uh, this is all original except, uh, uh, you know, for some of the leather that he's replaced, but for the most part, uh, it's, it is old harness. I picked up this uh, saddlebag here, 
the condition of the leather on this saddlebag, we see sometimes in some of the harness that we have. So what do you do when you have old harness that's good? You have reconditioned harness that is good. And you've got brand new harness that you just ordered off the internet two weeks ago from Ship Shawana Harness Shop in Indiana. So how do you handle that? Well, that's a personal thing, in my opinion. Do you, do you, you give uh, points for the brand new more than you do the, the old that's in good shape, the leather's in good shape, it's not crackling, it's not brittle? Uh, so, so what do you do? Well, I think that's a personal thing. How you score that harness is, is kind of like what you would like to have. And certainly that's a point of contention because what, what I might like to have might be different from what you would like to have. I really like this reconditioned harness that Dale's got. I think it's, I think it's just really good harness. However, if we had a harness, complete harness that had leather that was in this kind of condition, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's functional. It will do the job. My personal opinion would be I'd give more points to this or more credibility to this harness just because of a personal thing. Just because of a personal thing. So those are things that you run into, uh, brand new versus old, but, uh, and, and you're gonna, if you judge much at all, you're gonna run into the gamut. You're gonna have people uh, that, to me, when you see that harness on that tug that's all jammed up and this, that, and other, they're trying to hide something. There's something in there that's not gonna work. So uh, take a good look, feel of the, uh, of the condition of the harness, know your harness parts, know what you're talking about if you, if you say a crimper or you say a uh, hame strap or you say a britching, uh, know, what, know what you're talking about. Okay, continuing on with our harness, if you run across a harness that has chains on the end of the tongue, that's an indication that tells you that this is a military harness. If you have that, you have a military harness, you want to hook your hooks from your harness into the end cap of the single tree here, not chain to chain, because that tends to come out. If you have leather tugs, they will have an end on it similar to this right here, and that is what hooks into this hook on your single tree. So if you run across the chains at the end of, of your tugs, that's an indication that you have a military harness. Okay, so coming on back, we have the single tree and then the single tree on the other side. These are hooked to what we call the double tree and they are attached with this clevis hook here. At the back of this clevis hook is another smaller hook. This is called a stay chain hook. A way to check for authenticity is this pin right here is made for this and it will go through and turn and at the bottom of this pin, there will be a little niche that it fits into so that this all comes together and will not pop out. Hook to the back of the stay chain hook is the stay chains. And they're hooked at the back of the double tree. And then under the wagon, there's a hook that is attached to the front axle of the wagon. The purpose of the double tree is to make sure that both animals are pulling their equal weight. If you got one horse that's pulling more than the other one, you may want to shorten him up with your stay chain which you would do back there at, at, at the back. Uh, and that was a general, you generally had one animal that would pull a little harder or faster uh, than the other animal. These are connected to, to the tongue with a wheel wrench, which is right here. Now, if you look at that, you'll see that it is similar to a wrench. That's why it's called a wheel wrench. Purpose of this is to tighten up the nuts on your wheels. And Dale will 
probably cover that uh, a little later on. So you have a wheel wrench here. If you run across a situation where you just got a bolt stuck in there, uh, you may want to uh, give that consideration of maybe uh, uh, might not get uh, as much credit as one that, that has a wheel wrench. Okay, let's talk about the tongue. Of course, the tongue is, is uh, very important. That's what pulls the wagon. But how the tongue is attached and fits into the fifth wheel on the wagon is very important. If you look back in here on the, at the tongue assembly, this is called an outside hound. Inside on the, attached to the tongue is the inside hound. The outside hound is part of the fifth wheel uh, mechanism that, that steers the wagon. A lot of people think that this bolt that runs through the outside, inside hounds, the tongue, through the other side is what pulls the wagon. That is not correct. It is extremely important that where the outside hound and the inside hound meet, which is right here, that that be extremely tight because if you could, the fifth wheel runs out, the inside hounds, they run out, the, the force between the inside against the outside hounds is what pulls the wagon. So if you have a lot of slack in here between where this outside and inside hounds meet, then your tongue is not as in good a shape as uh, one that is tighter. So the tighter that fit right in here between the outside and the inside hounds, the better, uh, the better that your tongue fits. Uh, ideally, it would be nice to be able to pick that tongue up and work it and see how, the thing, how it all works in here together. But normally you can't do that because people have got harness on the tongue. So, but you can look and see how tight this mechanism is right here because it is, uh, is extremely, extremely vital.